Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. This week all week, we're sharing excerpts from the audiobook of The Space Within, and today's excerpt is about creativity, what it is to go back to the drawing board and tap into that ever-present source of new thought. When I first began doing radio shows for Hay House Radio over 10 years ago, I thought we'd have a shelf life of about three months before my bag of tricks was empty and people, including me, would start losing interest. My first attempt at addressing this problem was to expand my bag of tricks and put more tools into my toolbox, and I began reading at an ever more voracious pace to keep my head continually filled with whatever was at the cutting edge of psycho-spiritual thought. Before each show, I'd print off up to a dozen pages of tips and techniques, so I had something to fall back on if not enough people phoned in for me to talk with. But then one week I got to the studio late and didn't have time to print anything off for just in case. For the first time, I'd forgotten my toolbox and didn't have my bag of tricks with me. To my surprise, the show not only went well, it went considerably better than many of my prepared shows. Here's what I realized that day. You don't need a toolbox or a bag of tricks if you have access to a well. Once you see that the infinite well of creativity, in other words, the deeper mind, is always available to you, all you need to do is empty your mind, drop your bucket into that well, and see what comes up. If you don't like it, you don't have to drink it. You can dip your bucket back into the well as often as you like. It takes a load off your mind when you don't have to carry what you've done before around with you everywhere you go. And each time you get fresh new ideas from the creative well, you trust it a little bit more, and you get more of a feel for letting things come to you in that way. It's not only easier, it's more fun. And it's surprising how often what comes through is the perfect solution for the task at hand. As I got more and more comfortable just showing up for each broadcast and being open to whatever showed up, I began to see that what was happening was completely in line with the nature of creativity. Form always comes out of the formless. Everything is created from nothing. So whether I was brainstorming possibilities, doing a show, or writing a book or article, the more willing I was to hang out in the unknown and show up with a clean slate, an empty bucket, and a blank piece of paper, the more likely it was that something fresh and new would come through me and out into the world. In fact, when I got stuck and insecure about not having anything to say, it was inevitably because I was trying to repurpose an old idea instead of just hanging out in the infinite creative potential of the mind. And that's true in every area of our life. In any situation, we have the choice to either show up empty-handed and fully present or already full of what we think we know and what we've done before. But every time we do it the way we've done it before, it feels a little bit staler. Our stories start to sound like stories. Our pitch feels as though we've made it a million times and we start having to work at making things seem fresh instead of allowing them to actually be fresh. Whereas if you're willing to go back to the drawing board every single time, you know that things will never get dull. You won't get into a rut or start dreading the fourth meeting of the day because every single time you're starting with a clean slate, an empty bucket, and a blank piece of paper. And the best thing of all is that it doesn't even matter if you're not terribly fond of what you create. Because you're always creating from nothing, you can wipe the slate clean, empty the bucket, crumple up the paper, and start again. It's something like this not this. Imagine that from the moment we're born, every one of us is given our own magical cow as a companion. Anytime we need nourishment, we need only look to the cow and it will give us fresh milk. Being a magical cow, its milk is healing, delicious and nourishing, giving even the most lactose intolerant among us exactly what we need to function beautifully moment by moment. Now imagine that over time we forget about our magical bovine companion but never lose our craving for its milk. We seek to slake our thirst from the cows of those around us, even arguing with others about where to find the one true cow that will deliver unto us the freshest, most nourishing milk. We might even be tempted to go down to the village every Sunday and stockpile a week's supply of our favorite brand, 
so that if we find ourselves in need of extra nourishment in the midst of our day-to-day -day life, we always have some to hand. Yet this bottled milk rarely refreshes us in the way that it did when we first drank it, and no matter how wonderful the farmer whose cow gave us the milk, it never quite delivers the magical quality of perfect nourishment that our own cow's fresh milk contains. Some of us might even carry around bottles of the milk that had nourished us as children, dismissing its sour taste as a function of our own unworthy taste buds and not as a function of what happens to all milk when it's been away from its source for too long. Finally, imagine waking up one morning and remembering that having a magical cow as a companion is your birthright as a human being, a gift from the divine to remind you of your spiritual nature even as you live your one and only life fully in the world. You look into its soft eyes and realize it has never left you, and you feel deep gratitude for its presence in your life. Sure, you might still enjoy tasting the milk from other cows, but you cease to look to it for nourishment. Carrying around old milk looks less and less of a good idea, and once again you come to rely on your own magical companion as the source of exactly what you need, exactly when you need it. In tomorrow's final excerpt from the book, I'm going to be sharing about Mojo, one of the keys to high performance. You can listen to the whole book in your own time by going to michaelneal.org forward slash store forward slash audiobook and downloading your own copy. Until tomorrow, have fun, learn heaps, and I'll talk to you soon.